I've uh, brought a few samples here, essentially the history of oscilloscope tubes, and an adjunct to uh, the Mr. Tektronix here, I can <coughs> show the development of the CRT through the ages, and including a couple of, uh, I guess you call them high points, points at which caused the development of a whole new class of oscilloscopes as time went on. And with the help of the uh, museum over there, we have a scope tube here in the nude, and you can see, indeed see, the electron gun, the cathode at the top, a couple of accelerator electrodes, and you can see the deflection plates. Here's the, I believe it's probably horizontal first, and then or, uh, vertical first, and then horizontal. And then you can see the phosphor screen. And then from the back of it, the side that the electron beam strikes, you can get to see that too, because this one lacks its own, its internal shielding, the, the aqua dog coating. So you can come up and see that. But this represents the first style of CRT developed around 1930-some-odd and has been allowed some of those early World War II radar units to be built. For instance, this is an early, this is a World War II radar oscilloscope uh, display tube. The feature there you can see, it's, it's, got, uh, it's got a high voltage accelerator on it and it has the aquadog coating which is part of the acceleration. And then it has a simple screen this style screen has a long persistence. Remember the mention of persistence for the eye. Since the radar beam is something that travels around in a circle in several seconds, you need to store an image. This is an early way of doing it. It's a phosphor that lasts for about 10 seconds, once lit. Uh, so this is roughly 1940, 1942 kind of thing. Then they were able to make it bigger. This is the kind of tube that you would find in the synchronized sweep, non-triggered synchronous sweep oscilloscope made from 1938 or so up into the early 50s. You can see the same structure here, you can see the electron beam. And the style of oscilloscope that you could build with this kind of a tube is a kind of a low frequency affair because it took a couple of hundred volts to deflect that beam from side to side because the entire acceleration velocity of the beam was present the same from one end of the tube to the other because the acceleration was applied right about here within the tube and it passed the electrons passed through the deflection plates very quickly so it took a lot of voltage to move them and that's one of the key points in the design of the CRT a little later on your friends down the road there at Hewlett Packard developed a flat screen for a CRT. This now allowed you to put a graticule on the front of that tube and actually read a voltage without having to read around a curve with your eyes. So this was a great development. But still, this is only a couple of hundred kilohertz to a few megahertz. But it, it made a passable oscilloscope, and a lot of these you'll find at flea markets in the, the 120 series, <coughs> the Packard scopes, often in a rack mount. And they make good scopes for doing sweep setups and things like that. But the real breakthrough, the real breakthrough that I think we can attribute to the Tektronics folks is what's called the post-acceleration, post-deflection accelerator. You see this tube has a spiral down it. The principle that this thing works on is that the beam passes through the deflection plates at a very low velocity. And the amount of deflection you can get is a product of the time that the electron spends within the deflection plate and the amount of voltage that you put on it. So if you can go with a slow beam through the deflection plate, now you can deflect that electron with just a few volts. And anyone who's tried to build a wide band amplifier knows that getting wide voltage swing at a very high frequency is a very difficult thing to do. So the fact that they could get this beam to deflect side to side with only maybe 20 volts was the thing that allowed them to build 25, 30, 50 megahertz oscilloscopes in the vacuum tube era. This was the serious breakthrough. The way the spiral works is the screen is at 10 kilovolts on this button, the deflection plates are about ground, and the cathode is around minus 15 or one and a half kilovolts. So all of the deflection, all of the acceleration of the beam happens in this space and it happens in a tapered manner from the spiral. I don't know whose patent this is, but it was worth billions and millions of dollars. Then, uh, from there on, it's only been shrinking in size. This is a CRT from a, 
a uh, television style monitor. It's the flat face, and indeed, this one, you can see a little burn line on there. That's what you saw, often get from a fixed digital display, something that displays the same uh, kind of signal over and over again. This allowed space saving because now you've got something that isn't round with a, with a square trace on it. It actually kind of shapes the, uh, about the waveform you're trying to watch. And then we come to the scope tube that's used in that 453 back there. And uh, once again, it's, its breakthrough is what it's, they call an internal radicule. Any of these other CRTs required a faceplate with some lines etched on it so you could read the voltages. This one is inside the tube. And the wonderful thing about that is that you can look at it from any angle and not have a parallax issue because you're writing on the same surface on which the radicule is also placed. That was another nice breakthrough. And the last breakthrough is actually back in this tube. This breakthrough allowed them to get from 30 megahertz up towards 100 megahertz. And if you look real closely inside this one, you'll see there's a bunch of coils in there. What they've done is they've actually cut the deflection plate up into sections and then provided a coil, a little matching network from one plate to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. The purpose of this is to match the velocity of propagation down this structure to be the same as the beam of electrons that's passing through it. And the result is they get the best and flattest deflection sensitivity all the way out to 100 megahertz. This technology is still in use, even in the, 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 uh, the most modern ones, the, the CRT. So uh, that's kind of how it went until LCDs knocked everything out of the market. <laughs>